Welcome to Kunstadt Sports. My name is Peter Kunstadt, and we are here today to give you an overview of skis and bindings. Uh, at Kunstadt Sports, all our employees are athletes, and uh, many employees are ski racers. Uh, here with me is uh, Zoe Newell, who is an excellent ski racer, a great person, except for the days when she beats me in a race. Today we're going to be telling you a little bit about how to select skis for your individual abilities, as well as show you the difference between recreational skis, performance skis, and racing skis. Before we get started, we need to go over a few concepts that'll help you understand the geometry of modern skis. First, we have our ski length. That is the measurement from your full tip to tail. Next is your running length, which is the point where the ski actually initiates contact with the snow. Next is our tip width, which is the width of the tip. Next is the waist width, which is the width of your waist of your ski. And finally, the tail width, which is the width of the tail of the ski. These numbers are extremely important on the ski because it helps determine the radius of the ski. Over a decade ago, uh, the concept of a parabolic ski was introduced and that was definitely a revolution in, in ski design. Uh, the, the, parabolic, the parabolic shape basically means that the, that the edge of the ski is made in a shape of a parabola and that in turn means that when a ski is flexed, in a flexed position, uh, the edge creates a a, f a regular radius or a, or a continuous radius. And that radius is then defined by the length of the ski, by the tip, the waist, and the, and the tail uh, width. Another important concept in determining ski geometry is the camber and rocker. The simplest way to explain camber is if you were to take a piece of string from your tip of your ski to your tail, uh, and measure the distance between the string and the center of the ski will determine the amount of camber in the ski. Another way to fully understand camber of the ski is with this demonstration. As you can see that both the tip and the tail are in contact with the floor and the center is not. The distance between the floor and the ski is your camber in the center. The rocker, also known as reverse camber, is as, as, the word, as, as the name suggests, the opposite of a camber. Uh, the tip, instead of being bent down, is bent up ever so slightly. Uh, it's very hard to demonstrate uh, on, on the type of skis that we have uh, in our stock. Uh, the, the tip is lifted up to ease initiation of turns. We are now going to move on to specific categories of skis. These include recreational, performance, racing, and specialty skis. Here are some examples of uh, recreational skis. So what a recreational ski uh, has is generally lightweight, a short radius, and these skis are generally soft for easy operation, for easy skiing. Uh, of course, the price uh, you pay is a little reduced uh, performance, but there is definite comfort in uh, skiing on a recreational ski. Our next category is performance skis. Performance skis are generally stiffer, as well as they come usually in a variety of different radiuses, depending on your skier performance, as well as ability. Uh, they also come with a few more technologies uh, compared to more of your recreational ski. Peter here will go over a few of the technologies in the Alan and Fisher skis. Thank you, Zoe. Uh, Fisher came uh, a few years ago with the concept of a progressor ski and uh, the, the edge design is exactly what that name suggests. The, uh, the edge is progressive, uh, it is not a constant radius, uh, there is a variety of radii in that ski to ease initiation and to have the ski feel uh, like a cruising ski at, at high speeds as well. So it's a very good combination of easy, easy initiation, easy turning, and uh, high speed performance when that is required. On the other hand, Elan came up with an, a very innovative combination of uh, tech, uh, shapes of, of edges, and they call it Amphibio. The, um, the concept in Amphibio is that the, the active edge on the ski is cambered like a regular performance ski 
and it feels just like exactly like a like a performance key. On the other hand, though, the 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 outside edge, and now we have introduced a right ski and a left ski because uh, we have to maintain an inside edge and a separate outside edge. Uh, the outside edge is a uh, rocker ever so slightly, uh, which makes uh, for very, very easy initiation. And also the, the feeling and or the, the phenomenon of uh, catching an edge is a thing of uh, history. Catching an edge basically uh, means that the skier stepped on a wrong ski uh, in a turn and the wrong ski theoretically wrong ski does not have that edge to catch because it's rockered away so this is a very very user friendly ski easy to initiate easy to to work with and still offering a very high performance and last but not least here is atomics double deck the uh, the concept of a double deck here is uh, that they added a a piece of uh, plastic on top of the ski that's attached to the ski loosely with elastomer. And what's interesting about it is that this elastomer uh, gets engaged only when a ski is flexed. So as the ski is flexing, as the, as the flex increases, the, uh, the stiffness of the ski increases as well. And so the ski actually responds to the, the temperament and the style and the power of the skier. So the ski changes from an easy ski to a stiff ski as the as the the skier uh, increases increases pressure. Our next category are race skis. Race skis are the simplest ski on the market today. They have a sandwich construction, basically meaning two sheets of metal and a full wood core uh, stacked on top of each other, uh, with a very simple stiff riser plate on top. Race skis generally have, are constructed with a full sidewall as well as improved base material to make the skis go faster on ice. Our last category is specialty skis. Specialty skis are made up of a variety of different types of skis. First, we have a twin tip, which is what Peter is here holding. A twin tip is usually used in a park uh, or if people want to ski backwards, they have a tip at the tip as well as a tip at the rear for easy backwards skiing. Yeah, ideal for people who don't know which way is forward and which way is backward. <laughs> Next is junior skis. Junior skis are generally 70 to 130 centimeters. Uh, they are soft, usually about the softest ski on the market, uh, easy for turning and easy to learn how. Generally for most junior skis they all have pretty cool graphics as well uh, to make it fun for the kids. Our next category is women's specific skis. Uh, women specific skis again are usually have better graphics kind of zoned in for a women skier uh, as well as they are sometimes softer uh, for easy turning and easy skiing as well as the biggest difference between a women specific ski is going to be the binding is generally moved up ahead on the ski about a centimeter um, for a little bit better balance points for our women. There are many other uh, specialty skis that we uh, will not go into specifics into here, but there are, for instance, uh, mogul skis that are built softer without uh, any carving shape, and they are soft so that they, the tips don't, don't hit into the, the moguls. They're easier to maneuver in moguls. They're usually short and narrow. Uh, the, the, extreme, the other extreme are powder skis that are extremely wide, over 100 millimeters often wide, uh, and very frequently they are rockered for easy turning and uh, of course uh, in the powder situation there is no need for carving and so these skis are not made to carve, they are made to float nicely in uh, deep snow. And there are many other specialty skis that uh, we don't mention. Another very important factor when choosing a ski for you is the ski length. Ski length is very important in determining how you, the ski is going to perform on the snow. Generally, a ski with a radius of 14 or smaller will be a length about to where about your nose, as seen here with Peter here. With a radius of 14 and under, it's a very small radius, meaning very small turns on the hill. Having a shorter ski is a lot easier for you to be able to maneuver around your turns. A ski with a radius bigger than 14, you usually want to go about around your height of your head. 
Uh, this means your radius is a lot bigger, meaning longer turns. You need a longer ski to be able to support your entire turn. For the mostly, for kids and beginner skis, it's always good to have a ski around nose length and shorter. Makes it a lot easier for maneuvering as, long, as well as um, easier to learn how to ski on the snow. The introduction of carving ski made it necessary to lift the ski boot off the ski to a certain, to a certain degree in order to avoid the boot touching the snow when the ski is carving to an extreme point. Uh, this is achieved generally either by a riser that is added to the ski, like here, or a combination of a riser and a binding that has a riser in, built in it as well. Practically all ski manufacturers introduce integrated binding systems. The advantage of an integrated binding system, obviously, first of all, is that the binding uh, binding works with the ski specifically and ideally. Uh, of course, the disadvantage to the user is that they lost the, the freedom to choose what type of binding uh, would they select after they have selected their ski. Another concept that became necessary with the introduction of carving skis uh, is the floating binding. Um, it is necessary because of the decreased length of the ski for the whole length of the ski to be functional. And that is achieved by allowing the binding to float. Uh, in this particular case, uh, the, toe, the toe is uh, floating freely in the rail and so is the heel floating freely in the, heel, uh, in, in the rail and the binding actually is attached to the ski in the center. So as the ski flexes, both the toe and the heel freely um, float in, in, uh, on the ski, thus letting the ski function completely over the whole length of, uh, of its edge. Now that you have selected your skis and bindings, it's time to select your boots. There is a follow-up video on uh, boot selection. When you have selected your boots, skis and bindings, then it's time to get your binding adjusted to your boots by a professional technician. Here at Kunstad Sports, all our technicians are licensed and highly professional. If you're still in doubt, please check out our website, www.kunstadt.com, for local on-snow demo days, where you can try out our skis and see which one works best for you.